Oh look, a box. Yay. I bet it's a new retro handheld emulation device. The RG35XX. All right. Well, I guess let's uh, take a look inside. Oh! Retro Games. Retro Games. Retro Games. Retro Games. Retro Games. Oh, hello there. I'm TechDweeb. How you doing? Thanks for clicking on the video. There is a freaking jungle of retro handhelds out there. Oh my gosh, Hermione. I think we're lost. We're lost in the jungle. The jungle of retro handhelds. What are we gonna do, girl? Meow. You're right. I have to remember my Boy Scout training. Step one is to build a shelter. Meow. Yeah, this is super cozy. I think this is even more comfortable than Bob's basement. Meow. All right, uh, step two is to find some water. Ah, that's better. Ice cold and refreshing with minimal intestinal parasites. We're freaking awesome at surviving in the jungle of retro handhelds. Okay, what was step three again? Meow. Oh yeah, now I need to find and kill an animal for meat. Or we could just eat some of those uh, bananas, I guess. Mmm, uh, good bananas. Uh, you want one, girl? Meow. And now we have a new retro handheld to add to the retro handheld jungle. The RG35XX. Ek. Sex. Oh, man, <laughs> these stupid names. My boy, Izzy Dobre, in his video about this device, he called it the double X. It's like half the syllables as RG35XX. So let's go with that, the double X. Sounds badass. When it comes to retro handhelds, there are so many different shapes and sizes. I have my own preferences, and there are two general categories of device that I like. I like small little baby retro handhelds that live in my pocket, and I like bigger, bulkier handhelds that are still somewhat pocket friendly, but really I like that they have bigger controls and a bigger screen. You don't have to contort your hands into tiny little T-Rex claws to be able to hold them comfortably for extended gaming sessions. When the Double X was coming along, there was, there was talk about how this is Amber Dick's answer to the BU Mini. Now, those of you who are familiar with my channel know that I love the BU Mini. I've said it before, and I'll say it again here, why not? Not only is it my favorite retro handheld, it's also my favorite thing in the world, including you, Hermione. Meow, I love the BU Mini. I love the look of it, I love the function, I love the custom operating system on Uno S, and I love the size of it. That's, that's probably the most important part, actually. This thing lives in my cargo pocket. I carry it around all day, every day, and that's why I play it more than any other retro handheld. Because whenever I'm bored, like if I'm in the unemployment office and the bald man behind the desk is going on and on about, oh, why haven't you made a resume yet? You won't get a job without a resume. Also, your, your shirt has food stains on it. Maybe you should shave, blah, blah, blah. I can just pull out my retro handheld emulation device and crush my high score in burger time and turn a boring, sad situation into an awesome retro video game fun situation. <laughs> I think you know where I'm going with this. I knew the double X wouldn't replace the BU Mini for me. I knew that before I ordered it. It's big. It's not it's not massive like some of the other retro handouts you could get, but compared to the BU Mini, it's pretty darn big. It is pocket friendly. You can put it in your pocket, but there's no competition when it comes to how well it rides in your pocket. I had this in my pocket all day yesterday, and I just couldn't get over how big it felt compared to the BU Mini. The Mini is so small and light and slim that I, I barely notice it. This thing is way more substantial in your pocket, not, not only because of the size, but also the shape. You see these little nubs at the back, the finger rest shoulder button protrusions? Uh, they add to the thickness overall, and they add pointiness. The Miu Mini has this figured out. Theirs are flat against the back of the device, so there's nothing pointy when it's in your pocket. It's perfect for the pocket like this. They freaking nailed it. The Double X is just awkward feeling in your pocket with those nubs. For those of you who, like me, love the Miu Mini because it's MIDI, uh, this is definitely not even close to a replacement. It's not MIDI. It's like medium sized. But with that size comes comfort. It feels great in the hands. I don't mind using the BU Mini. My hand shape is very compatible with the contortions that uh, you need to be done to play the Mini for extended periods of time. I enjoy it a lot, but I've heard lots of complaints from reviewers and users who say the BU Mini isn't comfortable for them to use for long periods of time. And for those people, yeah, the Double X is probably gonna be a lot more comfortable. 
And even though I didn't find the Mini uncomfortable, I must admit that I do find the Double X more comfortable. Anyways, uh, let's do a quick unboxing. Oh, I didn't film the unboxing, so I'll just <laughs> fake it for you. In the box, we have the Double X itself. It came with a screen protector that, uh, it's kind of dumb, actually. Look, the edges of the screen protector aren't all the way down. You can see like a bubble around the outside. At first, I thought it would just need time to settle on the edge. I, I tried smushing it with my finger, obviously, but that didn't help. And over time, it's actually gotten worse. Actually, you know what? Screw this screen protector. It sucks. Oh, that's so much better. I'll take my chances like this, I think. And we also get a USB. USB-C cord to add to your drawer that has 749 crappy USB-C cords in it already, and some instructions, and oh wait, there's a note in there? What's this? Oh come on man, that's just rude. So here's the double X itself. On the front, we have a D-pad, menu buttons, start and select buttons, and the four face buttons. The D-pad and all the buttons on this thing suffer from the same problem. They're all a little bit stiff, they stick out too far, they feel cheap, but honestly, they're fine. They, they don't feel amazing, but they work, and I don't hate them. On the left side, we just have our volume up, up and down buttons. On the right side, there's a power button, reset button, and two micro SD card slots. There's a cool trick you can do with the second slot. I'll show you that in a little bit. On the bottom, we have a headphone jack and our USB-C charging port that also allow, does allow inputs. So you can hook up a USB controller here, but I'll get to that later. No data transfer through that port, unfortunately. And on the top, we have a mini HDMI port. Yeah, you can hook this thing up to a TV, and I'll show you that later too. Shoulder buttons are on the back, and there's a little lip where you can rest your fingers underneath and support the device, so it, it feels very comfortable. The downside is that it's a little bit pointy to put in your pocket like this, like I said, so it's a trade-off. And the buttons are in line, and the, the same as the rest of the buttons. So you, they stick out a little too far, they feel cheap, and they're a little bit stiff, but they're fine. They work. As for the look of this thing, the Double X comes in three flavors. Vanilla flavor, which is what I went for. It's like a white, semi-transparent, frosted plastic, and it actually looks really cool, in my opinion. I love the fact that you can see the white PCB underneath. It looks almost like Arctic camo or something. And also it comes in grape flavor with, with some purple plastic and 1980s flavor. So it has the old Game Boy vibe. I usually go for the old Game Boy vibe, but I decided to mix it up a bit with this white version because I really like what they've done here. And I want to support this sort of unique aesthetic because they got it right this time. It's a little bit heavy feeling to me, definitely heavier than my smaller devices, but it also feels more substantial because of that, more solid. I think I see a metal backplate in there behind the screen. Uh, speaking of which, let's take a look at the screen. It's a great screen. I I'm not gonna go into depth comparing this to the Miu Mini, but I'll just say that I love the Miu Mini screen, and I also love this screen. They're a little bit different in terms of brightness and saturation, but it's just as good as the Mini. I don't think you'll find much to complain about. The viewing angles are great, it's an IPS screen, so that's to be expected. OCA laminated, so the screen is very close to the surface of the glass, or plastic, I guess. Oh man, I sure hope I don't get a scratch on this. Maybe I should get a screen protector. It's also nice and bright on the maximum brightness, and pretty dim on the minimum. I don't think it's quite dim enough to enjoy playing in the darkness under your covers so your mom doesn't know that you're playing video games when you should be sleeping. I would have preferred if we had maybe one more level of dimness. The speaker is meh. A single mono speaker right at the bottom where your sweaty head could cover it up and mess up the sound. I, I know the original Game Boy put it there, so that's why so many of these things do it, but it's not optimal and they should stop. It sounds fine, a little bit tinny, a little bit scratchy at the max volume, but it gets quite loud. It does the job. So with the tour out of the way, let's check out the specs. Here they are. Did you catch that? No? Uh, here they are again. I'll get this out of the way right now. The device comes with its own operating system on a 64 gigabyte micro SD card preloaded with games. I almost immediately swapped out for my own SD card and installed a custom operating system on it, Garlic OS, which is great, but it has its quirks, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But first I want to show you the system that the device comes with, because I think lots of people actually just stick with the default system on these things. Lots of people don't like to tinker, so I gotta show you what it's like if you just buy this thing. It's fine. It's serviceable. That's the best way of putting it. It works fine. You got your game rooms, as they call it, which is just a list of your systems. Actually, I like the sound of that. Game rooms. Sounds fancy. You also got uh, favorites, 
You can add your games to that list, history, search, and settings. Not much to talk about here though. You can change your background and icon style, change the sleep time, change the controls, all the basic stuff that you want. For the systems that come pre-installed, we have a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to read it all to you. Go ahead and pause the video if you want to see all the basic stuff, all the popular 8-bit and 16-bit era consoles and PS1. That, that, that's what you can expect here. While your game is running, you can tap the menu button to bring up the in-game menu. In here, you can save and load your state, obviously. You can also change the scaling mode. Fast is my preferred mode, so it just has the crisp original pixels without any blurring. Also, you can select dot matrix or scan lines, which makes it look like an old CRT or something. And you can select HD, which adds some simple bilinear filtering, kind of smooths out the jagged pixels if you don't like those. You can also change the aspect ratio here. However, all of these options are pretty hit or miss. Uh, for example, you have no scaling options in several of the systems like PC Engine and Super Nintendo, and you can't disable the bilinear filtering. So whatever. The biggest issue that I have here with the stock setup is all related to the games list. My first complaint is that they're just stupidly organized. They are alphabetical, but most of the games have a three digit number in front of them. So they're not in any order that makes sense. Why did they do it like this? Well, I don't know. Seems pretty freaking stupid stupid to me though. Also, some of the games have box art or screenshots, but most of them don't. And some of the games are in English, but some are Japanese, and there's no way to tell from the menu. So you just fire up Star Fox and then you're like, oh, it's Japanese, that sucks. Also, they're missing some pretty key games in these lists. There's no Mario games here, for instance, but there's other first party Nintendo games. So why did they leave out the Mario games? That's confusing to me. Long story short, if you're going to be using the stock operating system, either plan to do some maintenance to the ROM sets or just accept that you're going to get a, a hit or miss experience playing your favorite games. This is the reason that I highly recommend getting yourself a new SD card. Go for like a 32 gigabyte micro SD card or a bigger one if you're going to be putting on lots of PS1 games and install a custom operating system called Garlic OS. It's not even hard to install. I made a guide actually. How to install Garlic OS in two minutes. I'll link to that guide in the description below. Follow that if you want to do this yourself. Now, if you do install Garlic OS, you'll notice that yours looks different than mine. That's because I made my own boot logo, and I also converted and customized my own modified Miu Midi theme based on Onion Boy HD, which is what I use on my Miu Midi. So now they match. <laughs> Those who know me well know that I gotta have my orange color scheme. I'll link to my custom Garlic OS theme and boot logo in the description below if you want to download it. There's a readme file in there that'll explain how to install it. Garlic OS was made for the community by Black Seraph, the same modder who's done a lot lots of different custom operating systems for other retro handheld devices. What a freaking hero. If you download Garlic OS, consider supporting them on Patreon. They're doing some great work for the community. So why go with a custom operating system? Well, lots of reasons, actually. The first is that it adds way more supported systems. See, look here, look at this huge list of cores. I'm not going to read them all to you, but you can pause the video if you want to read the whole list. I should mention that this Garlic OS image in general is kind of early in development. Some stuff doesn't work. For example, I was getting dual inputs in my DOS games. The D-pad was bound to WASD on the keyboard, but also bound to the arrow keys on the keyboard, and there was no way to unbind them, as far as I could find, and I tried for a while. That's just one example. There are a few small things that don't work quite as expected. But as the system matures, these little quirks will get ironed out. And even as it is right now, today, it's still way better than the stock OS. All the important stuff works fine. You won't have any major issues. Another reason to go with Garlic OS is that all the emulation here is based on RetroArch. So you have all the flexibility in the world to set up your own game screen ratio, custom shading options, tweak the latency settings, tweak the performance options, and each core also has a ton of options. So for example, example, here in Game Boy, my favorite game, Burger Time, you can select whichever color scheme you'd like for the, the screen, but which, which you can't do with the stock operating system. You can do that through the RetroArch menu, or this is actually set up to use the shoulder buttons to swap on the fly. Uh, RetroArch also gives you the power to set up the controls however you want, or even save unique control schemes on a per game basis. For example, here in Devil Crush on the PC Engine, I like to have the shoulder buttons be my pinball paddle buttons, but only for this one game. 
You can do that here at RetroArch. You can even customize RetroArch itself. You can apply themes, toggle the menu visibility to show more or less options, and each core also has its own set of options. So on PS1, for instance, you can set the game to use enhanced resolution, which will upscale the 3D graphics of the games that don't run at 640 by 480 natively. Or here's another example. I'm not a fan of the way the GBA scales on this screen, so I can open up the RetroArch menu, back out to the settings, go into the video settings, and apply a video filter. I like this scale 2x filter. Go back to the game and it's applied and it looks great. And since I like the look of this, I can go back into the RetroArch menu, go down to the overrides and save the core override so that I have this filter applied only to my GBA games. These are just examples. It's, it's so deep and powerful. It's amazing that we can have this here on the double X. RetroArch isn't the most intuitive system if you're not familiar with how it works, but I made a guide to explain everything. In the guide, I use the BU Mini, but the same principles apply here. It's no different on the double X. I'll link to that in the description below. Garlic OS has some nice quality of life features as well. For example, when you're in a game, if you hold the menu button and use the volume up and down, it'll change the brightness of the device. If you hold the menu and press the R2 button, it'll save your state and then menu and L2 loads your state. If you hold menu and press X, it'll open up the RetroArch menu where you can change any of the options for the emulation core or any of the other RetroArch stuff. Also, if you just tap the menu button by itself, you'll be taken out of the game. It will automatically save your state and show a screenshot. This will be stored in the recent menu so that you can look through all the most recent games that you've been playing. And whenever you load up that game again, you'll be taken right back to where you left off. Also, if you turn off the device while a game is running by simply holding the power button, it'll automatically save your state. And then when you power back on, it'll drop you right back in your game, right where you left off. So if you have a game on the go, you can literally never bother seeing the main system menu. Just leave your game on, turn the device on and off as you please, and it'll just be that game the whole time. That's a very useful feature right there. Oh, and I, I should mention that the performance under Garlic OS is great too. Uh, I've encountered very few problems with anything. All the hard to run stuff runs great. Hard to run PS1 games are no problem, even when you're running them at enhanced resolution. The hard Super Nintendo games to run, like Yoshi's Island and Star Fox, are running fine. The hard to run Game Boy Advance games, like Duke Nukem Advance, do not run great, but that's more of a compatibility thing. <laughs> These games don't run great on freaking anything. Even my high-end Android phone doesn't run Duke Nukem Advance well. I did have some small issues with a few of my main games not loaded correctly with like glitched out graphics, but they loaded up fine when I loaded them manually through RetroArch and tried a different MAME core. So that, that's probably just an issue with my ROM set, to be honest. MAME ROM sets are just uh, freaking annoying to deal with. Uh, that's not a problem with this OS though. That's just one of the fun aspects of being a retro emulation enthusiast. But these problems are few and far between. 99.9% .9 of the stuff that you'll want to run will run problem free. And you'll have all the convenience of Garlic OS like being able to save your stay with the push of a button or power down your device and then power back on later right back where you left off and all that good stuff. Honestly, if I didn't have Garlic OS on here, I wouldn't enjoy the double X nearly as much. I probably wouldn't even play with it to be honest. But with Garlic OS, it feels basically the same as the BU Mini functionality wise. Just a, a different size and shape. Okay, so check this out. There are three unique features of this device that I really want to show you. The first is that this device has two SD card slots. So this second slot, what's that for? Well, Black Seraph has made Garlic OS compatible with Onion OS SD cards. So watch this. I can yank the SD card out of my BU Mini, shove this in the second SD card slot hole on the double X, and then I have all the games from my Onion OS SD card available to play right here. And it even does the save states. So if you have a game on the go from your Miu Mini, put it in here, start it up, and then you're playing right where you left off on the Miu Mini. And then when you're done here, it'll automatically save your state, and then you can put the SD card back in your Miu Mini and resume your game on the Miu Mini. <laughs> How cool is that? Another thing that's cool is controller support. Uh, to get this working, you need to do a little thing on the root level of your SD card. Just read the README file that comes with the Garlic OS image zip if you want to know how to do that. You can use a USB-A to USB-C dongle for that. Just shove it 
it in the dongle hole and plug in your controller and it should, in theory, just work. I've had hit or miss success with my controllers. Two of them worked, but two of them didn't. Maybe we'll get better compatibility in the future, but for now, it's uh, pretty darn cool that we could use this thing with a controller if yours works. And one more awesome feature is the mini HDMI port at the top. You can use a mini HDMI dongle to plug in a full-sized HDMI cord and display the screen on your TV. Although my HDMI audio wasn't working when I did this in Garlic OS, unfortunately. Now, I'm not sure why. I've seen other YouTube videos where theirs was working fine. It might be because of the cheap dongle that I have that I shoved in the HDMI hole, or it might be a bug with my, my install of Garlic OS. I, I don't know. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any idea of why mine isn't working for me. I'd love to get to the bottom of that, but it'll probably work for you. And if it does, you can basically turn this thing into like a home console for your TV. Plug in a controller, plug it into your TV, sit back on the couch and play some Turtles in Time. This is like little extra bonus stuff, but it's so freaking cool that we get all this functionality on a, a cheap handheld like this. So before we wrap things up, I'll show you some quick gameplay of a variety of systems so that you can see how they look and play on the double X. And uh, I guess to wrap things up, uh, what's the big takeaway here? Well, I, I think without Garlic OS, it's a good device with some small issues with the system and games list. But with Garlic OS, it's a freaking amazing device. The device itself is wonderful. It feels really good in the hands. They did a really great job with the ergonomics of this thing. It, fe it feels great to play. The screen is big and bright and colorful. The sound is eh, pretty good. The performance is great. And ju just uh, as a device, it's really wonderful to sit down and play games on, you know? Every time I get a new device, I start a new game just to force myself to get lost in a good old retro game. The game that I'm playing on the Double X right now is Zelda Minish Cap for the Game Boy Advance. This is one of the only Zelda games that I haven't played through yet. I was sitting on the couch last night playing it and the actual gaming experience was so enjoyable. I have very little to complain about and I'm sure that as Garlic OS gets a few more updates, it'll come into its own and complete the package perfectly. However, in my opinion, it's not a replacement for the BU Mini. I'm sorry, but it's just not. Like I said, I had it in my pocket all day yesterday and it felt freaking huge and heavy compared to how the Mini feels there. The Mini is Mini. They don't look like they're drastically different sizes on the video, but trust me, they feel worlds apart. If you're just looking for a retro handheld, you want something good, something in the under $100 price range, and you don't really care about the size or shape, or if you actually want a slightly larger, more comfortable device, then this is definitely an amazing choice. But if you want something that's truly pocket friendly, that you can actually shove in your pocket and ignore, that you can carry around with you every day to pull out and play a quick round of Donkey Kong while you're waiting outside the dressing room in the ladies section of Walmart while your mom tries on old lady lingerie, then the Miu Mini will serve you much better. This is not going to replace the Mini for me for that exact reason. I, I love the double X. I'm going to play it a ton at home, on the couch, or in bed, or in the tub. Not on the toilet though. <laughs> I need to have my full concentration there. It's just not a Miu Mini. It's a double X. It's great for different reasons than the Mini, but it's still great. 
Oh, and unlike the Miu Mini, which is constantly sold out or being scalped at inflated prices, you can actually buy the XX with a high degree of consistency. And Burdick definitely has their production chain in check. You can freaking buy this on Amazon right now if you want to. I'll include a link in the description below if you want to pick one of these up. And I suggest that you grab a fresh micro SD card. If you're going to go with Garlic OS, I'll link to a micro SD card that I recommend below as well. So, I'm going to give the double X a solid 98 out of 107 with a bonus Techdweeb golden can of root beer because it impressed me so much. And I'll throw in a non-golden can of root beer so that you can actually have a root beer to drink <laughs> because you're not going to drink the golden root beer because it's, it's not a real root beer, it's just a fake golden one for an award. I, I did want you to be, to be disappointed when you heard that you were getting a root beer but you wouldn't be able to drink it, so now, now you can. And that brings us to the end. Uh, please let me know in the comments below what are your thoughts on the double X? Are you a Miu Mini fan? Thinking about making the transition to a larger device? Are you in the market for a Mini and you can't find them in stock and think maybe the double X will do the job for you? Or are you new to the retro handheld hobby? Thinking maybe this will be a, a great device to get started with? I'm happy to answer any questions you have in the comments below. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you down there. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video or don't if you didn't. Check me out on Patreon, linked below. If you're a cool person and want to support the th things that I do. Oh man, this was a long video. <laughs> you made it all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Um, th that's it for me. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.